Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collop. In today's lab, we're going to continue our carbohydrate identification series with Selywanoff's test. This test identifies ketoses as opposed to aldoses. 5 mils of Selywanoff's reagent is added to 200 microliters of sample. The ring structure is opened up and then it can react with the chemicals in the Selywanoff reagent. Selywanoff contains resorcinol and hydrochloric acid. The byproducts produced by the dehydration of ketoses reacts faster than the dehydration of aldoses. This will then react with the resorcinol to create a cherry red color, which is why ketoses will appear cherry red, whereas aldoses will only appear to be a faint peach color. Water will be our negative control, fructose and glucose will be our positive controls. Fructose for a ketose and glucose for an aldose. We will heat the samples in a beaker of water on a hot plate. Remember to add your boiling chips for safety reasons. We'll have a beaker of ice water to stop the heating process, as well as beaker tongs to safely remove the heated beaker from the heat source when time is up. We'll place the test tubes into the water bath. Try to get them all in at approximately the same time so they are heated for the same duration. We will now heat these for a total of five minutes. So we're not sitting here watching it for five minutes. I will speed it up to 10 times normal speed. You can start to see the reaction happening. The tubes appear to be turning a peach color. And as it progresses, any ketoses will turn a cherry red color. Back to normal time now. We're almost at five minutes. We'll take the heat source away. And then transfer the tubes from the water bath to the ice water bath so that the heating reaction stops. If you don't do this, the residual heat in the water bath will continue to heat your samples. can definitely see some cherry red samples and some peach samples. Once again, ketoses will be cherry red, whereas aldoses will appear peach in color. I will let this sit for a few minutes before we analyze it. Here are our samples. You can see very different reactions for some of the tubes. We have our controls, water, fructose, and glucose, and we have our 13 unknown samples. Let's take a closer look at each of the samples, starting with our negative control, water. As you can see, no reaction has occurred. It appears very clear. Here is our fructose, positive control for ketose, and you can see it is cherry red. Next up is our aldose, positive control glucose, and you can see it is peach in color. Let's now analyze the unknown samples. Sample one. Sample two. Sample three.
Sample 4. Sample 5. Sample 6. Sample 7. Here is sample 8. Sample 9. Sample number 10. Sample 11. Sample 12. and sample number 13. Record down all your observations, not only the color, but also the intensity of that color. Let's take a closer look at two of the samples, sample number nine, compared to our positive control for ketosis, and sample 13, as compared to our positive control for ketosis. This is the last test in the series of tests we're doing for this round of carbohydrates. Taking all the observations from the five tests, Mollish's test, testing whether or not it's a carbohydrate or not, the iodine test, testing whether or not it's a polysaccharide or not, Barford's test, lets us know if it's a monosaccharide or not, Bilal's test, lets us know whether or not it's a pentose or a hexose carbohydrate, and finally, Sally Wanoff's test, letting us know whether or not it is a ketose or an aldose carbohydrate. For many of the unknowns, you should be able to identify exactly what the sample is. For those samples you cannot identify exactly what the sample is, you should have a good idea of what kind of carbohydrate it is. I will add the link to the first test, Mollish's test, at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and consider subscribing. Until next time.